Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another podcast and another blog. We're in Luke chapter 7, verses 40 through 50, which reads, Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as great as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. That's Luke chapter 7 verses 40 through 50. Simon, the Pharisee, concluded the Lord Jesus didn't know who the woman was. Therefore, he must not be a prophet. But the Lord Jesus knew what Simon was thinking. So, in verse 41, the Lord Jesus reaches out to this man who wants to do him in and says, Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. A guy approaches a money lender and says, I need a year and a half's pay. And he loaned him a year and a half's wages. And another person came and they needed two months wages. So he loaned it to him. In verse 42, we learn neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Neither of these guys could repay their debt. So the money lender graciously forgave them both. The money lender incurred their debt so that neither of them would have to think twice about it. Anytime somebody forgives a debt, they themselves incur that debt in full. If I lend you $75,000 and you can't repay it, and I say, I forgive that, then I've incurred that debt completely. That debt is now mine. The cost is transferred to me. I pay the bill. When God forgave our sins, He incurred the debt, and the Lord Jesus Christ died to pay it. The debt just doesn't go away. It still has to be paid. Forgiveness transferred our debt to the forgiver. At the end of verse 42, the Lord Jesus asked a pertinent question. Which of them will love him more? In verse 43, Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. While Simon assumed that he was the one with the smaller debt, the Lord Jesus never says this. He does make it clear later that the woman had a large debt, and he knew Simon would assume that he had the smaller debt. But the Lord Jesus wants Simon to understand that he too has a debt. 
it is not a small, insignificant debt that can be worked off. It is a huge debt. Every bit as large as the woman's. Then in verse 44, it starts to make sense. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Great love comes from great forgiveness. The woman so loved because she was so aware of her unworthiness. Simon didn't even do the courteous things for the Lord Jesus when he arrived at his house. He didn't wash his feet. He didn't welcome him with a welcoming kiss. He didn't anoint his head with oil. Simon didn't even recognize his own sinfulness, but the woman did. That is why she had a heart for the Lord, and Simon did not. In verse 47, we read, Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. This is written in the perfect tense. This is perfect tense, which means something happened in the past with continuing effect now and into the future. She came there already forgiven to find the Lord Jesus to thank him. According to verse 48, the Lord Jesus affirms it when he says to the woman, your sins have been forgiven. Again, it's the perfect tense. Have been in the past with continuing results. And the evidence is there for her love. She loved much because she was forgiven much. Great love comes from great forgiveness. According to verse 49, the other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgive sins. These always asked questions, but they never got to the answer. Their self-righteousness caused blindness, making them unable to see the greatest to ever to walk the earth. Notice the woman didn't say anything. She didn't have to, for her actions spoke volumes. And then in verse 50, he said to her, your faith has saved you. It wasn't her love that saved her. It was her faith that saved her. And that faith produced her love. It is always our faith that saves us. Always. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we read, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And because our faith in the Lord Jesus saved us, our love is manifest because our sins are forgiven. Go in peace. The Lord Jesus is literally saying, go into God's peace and live there forever. When the forgiveness of God defines us, we are put in a position to be used of the Lord in remarkable ways. It is his peace that has been unleashed in our souls, and we throw caution to the wind. He has become the audience of the forgiven. Being a leader is much like being a conductor of an orchestra. You have to turn your back on the crowd in order to lead the band. My friends, I trust these podcasts and blogs are helping you and your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, don't hesitate to shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day. <laughs>